Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my wasabi plants and I'm actually going to be harvesting my first harvest from these wasabi plants today and I'm going to be trying wasabi for the first time. I've had artificial wasabi quite often and I really like it. That's the type that you get in most shops and it's, it's as a form of paste and it generally is just made out of horseradish or other spicy things like mustard and dyed green to look like your wasabi but today I'll have to be trying wasabi for the first time. So these are two of my plants. I have a third one planted at my parents garden which I will try and get a photo of to show you how that's done. Now these were looking really quite good for most of the summer. They were growing nice and healthily. Then we had a bit of a heat wave and unfortunately I was away during the heat wave. Temperatures got up to the high 20s, probably around 28 degrees Celsius. They dried out. They looked like they had almost completely died. I was actually quite worried that they had died, which was a real shame because they had looked so good. They completely wilted. I watered them and they did come back. One of them lost all the leaves. The other one, some of the leaves survived. And then it started to look good again. And then we had some damper weather and the slugs have come in. And with the cold conditions now, because it's October time, they've not been growing many new leaves. And a lot of the old leaves are just getting eaten by the slugs. So that's why they're looking so poorly and so unhealthy at the moment. But the actual edible stems are looking quite good. So I'm really happy that I'm going to go ahead and actually make a harvest today. So with wasabi, you can keep harvesting from the same plant, even though you, you, when you cut the stem, that, that main growing point is taken away. They actually put out lots of side shoots and lots of pops from the base so you can just keep harvesting them again and again and you can actually start splitting them and getting more and more plants which I might do next spring and we'll just see how they do. So as I say there's two plants here, both of them have actually got a couple of stems which are big enough for harvesting now. But this is a healthier looking of the two plants. You can see the stem here, it's starting to rise out of the pot. So I've probably got a good 5-10 centimeters of stem there, it's a bit hard to soak because the, the soil level is a bit lower than the edge of the pot. But we're looking about 5 or 10 centimeters of stem there that I can harvest. There's a smaller uh, shoot on the side here, but there's not a lot of stems, so there's no point in me harvesting that one. And it's kind of hard to sow, but underneath you can see there's some there's some newer shoots starting to come through. So even if I take this stem off on this side, it will grow up with lots of new shoots from down towards the base. So we'll still get lots of wasabi plants growing next spring. This plant, which is a bit more eaten by slugs, even some of the newer growth has actually been eaten by slugs. There's one good stem here. This is probably the one I'll be harvesting today. You can see again about five or 10 centimeters in length. So I'll hopefully get a good bit of wasabi off of that. And then I'll have a look at the ones in my parents' garden, see if they're ready for, for harvesting yet. Or I might even split them up create a few extra plants and when it comes to eating this wasabi it's not going to be the top notch high quality wasabi to get that you have to grow them in water beds with gravel and keep them at really nice cool temperatures the whole year round so it won't be like gourmet wasabi but it will be real wasabi just that it's grown in soil so the flavor won't be absolutely perfect but it will still be quite nice it just won't be the top notch highest grade of wasabi so what I'm going to do now is get my, my tools ready I'm just going to cut some off and start preparing it for eating. So this is to say it's a plant I'm going to be harvesting from. I'm just going to get a sharp knife and I'm just going to cut it right towards the base where the the main part of this stem starts to protrude but above where the young pups are because I want it to be able to side shoot and still keep producing wasabi year after year. Now to get better access what I might do is take some of the leaves off first so that I can see what I'm doing because to get in there with a the knife is quite difficult as a lot of these leaves are in the way. So with those leaves now removed, it's a bit easier for me to get in and cut the stem. But the, the leaves themselves, they're quite old, they're really tough old leaves, so I'm not going to be eating them. I have been eating some of the leaves throughout the summer, just as an addition to salad, a nice spicy flavour. They're not very spicy compared with normal wasabi, because all the spice is really in the stem. But you can eat the leaves to make a nice kind of peppery leaf for your salad. A bit like maybe like an asturtium or a rocket, it just got that kind of peppery taste. Um, and they've got that hint of wasabi flavour as well. So they're quite nice, but as I say, I'm not super excited about them. They're certainly not the tastiest salad leaves I've ever had. So I'm just going to go ahead now, try and cut this as low as I can whilst keeping some of the side shoots. So there we go, that's it cut off. I could actually replant this if I wanted to, and you can see I've cut off a couple of side shoots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut a bit off of the, around these side shoots and try and get them so that I can propagate them and actually have a slightly larger collection of wasabi plants. So I'm going to keep these side shoots and I'm going to try and propagate them just see if I can get some more plants. 
interesting now I've got the stem it's very sticky you can see kind of there on the sap if I if I zoom in close but you can see it kind of stick into my finger there some of the, the sap and it also feels really creamy almost like like oily or sticky um, and there's a really nice smell now of wasabi which is a, a nice kind of smell that I wasn't getting when I was harvesting the leaves earlier in the summer it really is a nice fresh smell so this is how much I've harvested probably over five centimeters maybe about eight centimeters of stem what I'm going to do now is cut off a lot of these leaf uh, stalks at the side. I'm also going to give it a really good scrub and a wash so it's nice and clean and then I'll come back and I'll get, start preparing this ready for eating. So my wasabi is now ready for preparing. As you can see I've got a reasonable amount of stem there that I can use for making wasabi paste. So traditionally the way you would do this is you would get a really traditional grating surface. In Japan they use shark skin I think for grating down the wasabi. And it's very fine so what it does instead of grating it, it really kind of slowly sands it down into a fine paste. I don't have anything like that, but the closest thing I do have is I have this garlic um, grater thing which is supposed to make a bit of like a, a garlic paste, very fine surface. So I'm just going to use this, I'm just going to slowly rotate it around in circles, trying to grind it down into a, a sort of paste. Now with wasabi, it doesn't hold its heat for very long, so once I've grinded it down, I'll probably only have, have about 20-25 minutes to eat it to get the full flavour. Also the full flavour doesn't develop straight away. What happens is when the cells of the plant are damaged, they produce a volatile compound which gives the wasabi that lovely spicy flavour. That's a natural defence system to the plant being eaten. So it's getting eaten by a caterpillar or maybe another type of herbivore. It releases those volatile compounds. It's not pleasant for the animal eating it and it puts the animals off from eating the plant. So what I need to do is damage the cells by, by grinding it down. Leave it five minutes for that volatile compound to fully form at its highest peak level and then eat it within a few minutes before it starts to tail down again. As I say, it oxidizes, it doesn't keep that spicy flavor for long, which is why it's very difficult to get your hands on real wasabi because it can't hold that space spice for long. And that's why they normally use things like mustard or horseradish as substitutes. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and grind this down. And as for the variety, I don't actually know what variety this is. When I bought the plant, just said it was wasabi. There's lots of different varieties of wasabi though, and I'm not an expert in wasabi, so I don't know what type this is, but this has produced a reasonable size harvest in, in uh, two years of growing. I'm quite happy considering it's just grown in, in soil and not in a, in a water culture. If this is quite nice and I uh, quite like real wasabi, I'm definitely going to be growing more as I really do like the artificial type. So as I say, I'm just going to get this. I'm just going to rotate it in circles, just very gently grating it down, trying to form a paste. So I think that's enough for now. I'm just going to do a small amount because as I say, it doesn't last for long once it's prepared. So I'm just going to try and scrape it out of the plastic, which is a little bit tricky. But uh, I'll try and get a little collection in a small ball. You're supposed to put it into a small ball so that it has less surface area so you don't get too much oxidization whilst the flavor is developing. So I'm just going to scrape it together there into a small little center. And then we'll give it five minutes and I'll, I'll give it a taste, see what the flavor's like. So it's been about five minutes now, it's time for me to try the paste. It does actually smell really, really nice. It smells a lot nicer than the fresh leaves. The fresh leaves, they're just really a bit like a, a, any kind of boring salad leaf. This has got a really unique, nice smell. It does smell a little bit similar to the fake wasabi, but it's definitely a difference um, in the scent. So I'm gonna go ahead now and try a bit of this. Probably not the whole thing at once, because I'm not sure how spicy this is. Looking in line, it shouldn't be as spicy as uh, as fake wasabi, but I'll give it a go and see what it's like. So first thing I've noticed, it's got a really smooth kind of buttery texture, which is completely different to, to fake wasabi. It's more like a just like a normal kind of paste. Uh, but this is like a really nice smooth buttery texture. So I'll give it a taste and see what it's like. So it's really quite hot on the tongue straight away. Very mild flavour really, um, with a little bit of heat at the back of the throat, almost going up to the nose, but not at all like fake wasabi. Fake wasabi hits you strong in the back of the, the nose straight away. This has got an instant heat on the tip of the tongue. Um, really quite spicy, um, but very mild flavor. Really buttery and smooth. It's almost like eating butter, to be honest. Um, it is quite pleasant. I can see why it would go really nicely with raw, raw sashimi. I don't know what I prefer, if I prefer this or the fake stuff. I really like spicy food with a lot of cheese and things like that. So it's definitely missing the spice that I like with the, the fake wasabi, but it's got a different kind of spice. It's almost like a chili heat when it hits your tongue, but it only lasts for a few seconds. Unlike chili where when you first goes in your tongue, you don't taste it and then the heat really kicks in later. This has that initial heat and then it fades away very quickly. 
Um, a really nice fresh kind of taste, very buttery, almost creamy, um, which I wouldn't expect from a, a stem vegetable. It's almost like it's got a lot of fat content. That's what it tastes like. And um, But yeah, it's, it's really quite nice. It would be nice to try with raw fish. I don't have any sashimi on hand to try this with, but I'm definitely quite happy with it. Do I prefer it to the fake wasabi? I would say, I wouldn't say it's better or worse. I would just say it's very different. Definitely not the same. So fake wasabi, it has some of the same characteristics, but this is definitely quite different to, to fake wasabi. The real deal is definitely a different kind of dish. I would say this would definitely go nicer with sashimi though, because it wouldn't overpower the flavor. It's got a nice mild flavor. Anyway, that's it for this video. My first try of real wasabi. I'll give you guys an update on my plants as they progress, maybe throughout the years. But so far so good. And when when it comes to the rest of this, the wasabi stem here, I'm just gonna store this in the, in the, uh, in the fridge. And I'm just gonna keep rinsing it every few days, keeping it damp. And I'm just gonna grind it down bit by bit as I need it. There's no point doing lots because as I say, it only lasts about 20 minutes and then it's useless. So that's my wasabi update. Interesting trying wasabi for the first time. Quite a unique flavor. And I'll definitely be adding it to some of my fish dishes in the future.